Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Thursday morning. This is Brian, and uh, back for week two of NFL. Actually, going to do some uh, college handicapping here as well, since um, there's not a ton of games I like. Sorry about that. Before that, I'm going to get into this dab. Cheers. Dabbing on some, uh, actually, same stuff from last week. Melon bread, first class concentrates, ground by oak tree, or orchids. Yep, smoking out of the Vela G Stoke collab tube. Got Vela G's lip wraps, little window lip wraps, <coughs> and then these fumed out Stoke sections. It's made back in 2012. In Austin, Texas. All right. So, we got Thursday night football tonight. We got a NFC South matchup. Cam Newton, Carolina Panthers playing at home. They are favored six and a half points against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, some extra juice. It's actually looking like it's up to maybe minus seven, minus 105 for Carolina. 49 is the total. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take half a unit on the Panthers. Last year on the Thursday night games, or last couple of seasons, Thursday night home teams done really well and has uh, covered, I don't know the exact percentage number, but seem to have covered a good percentage of these Thursday night games. So, don't love it. I like Jameis last week in the Bucks, um, and he just gave the game away to the 49ers. So, Tampa Bay's D looked decent. Mike Evans, I think, was sick last week. So, I expect them to play well. Um, but, like I said, I'm just going with the home team. So, half unit there. Now, uh, I'm going to get in, move to Sunday's NFL games. And then just quickly go through a couple college games. Last week, I did a college video on its own. It was horrible. I missed every pick I think I talked about on there. Um, this week, there's not as many games I like. So um, I'm just going to put it at the end after the NFL stuff. Um, and actually, today before the football games kicks off at 520 West Coast time, I will be posting my uh, updated power rankings for the NFL on my Twitter. Twitter's bpink underscore 13. And um, yeah, I've got those all ready to post. Um, probably posting them here um, in a couple hours before the game starts for sure. So anyways, looking at Sunday's games, um, first game on the board for Sunday, we've got Indianapolis Colts at the Titans, Titans favored, minus 3, minus 120, and it looks like the over-under is around 43 and a half. So, last week, uh, Brissett and the Colts looked like they were going to get an upset win in LA, but ended up losing by 6 in overtime to the Chargers. Um, kind of tough loss for them, but they look decent. They look like they're still going to be a good team despite losing Andrew Luck. Last year, the Colts kind of dominated the Titans, beat, beat them both times they played. Well, um, last week of the season, there was that all-in game for whoever won and made it into the playoffs. Colts beat them there. So uh, Titans do have the revenge factor here. Titans looked really good, winning by 30 points in Cleveland last week. I was on them last week. I'm actually going to... Lean with the Colts, and um, let's see, you know, let me just, I'm going to go half unit on the Colts as well, so half unit Colts plus three plus 100, and uh, no action on the total there. Moving down the line, we got Chargers two and a half at the Lions, um, so Chargers slight home favorite in Detroit, Detroit coming off that game where they were blown out Arizona, and somehow they managed to end up pulling only a uh, tie after it, um, after overtime. So, Lions back at home. I wasn't big on the Lions before this year started. I took their under, took the Chargers over. The Chargers are a good uh, road team. Typically, I've seen spots like this where they're a small favorite on the road going back east, and Phillip Rivers and crew 
tends to pull the W. I'm not going to bet on the Chargers. I do lean with them. They have some injuries. They had injuries before the season, and then I think they picked up um, some injuries last week as well. And, uh, yeah, I'll just lean with the Chargers. But, uh, no action there. We've been down. We got Bills at Giants. Giants on the road, but they're playing in the state again, basically. So, they're favored one and a half. You know, give me half unit on the Bills. They won for me last week. I like their defense. I like Josh Allen. Um, Giants I was not big on. They're at home here as an underdog, but, I mean, Bills don't have to travel too far last week or this week coming back to the Meadowlands. So give me, or MetLife Stadium, whatever it's called now. You know, take Bills for half a unit. All right. Moving down, we got... Um, Ravens and Cardinals. Ravens are favored 13 after just destroying my Dolphins week one. Cardinals, 13-point underdog with Kyler and Murray. 46 is the total. Um, I believe the Ravens have some injuries in the secondary. Um, you know, I still lean towards the Ravens despite those injuries. Um, I don't think I'll actually... Might not play anything with that big spread. Um, but I do like the over expect the Cardinals are going to score, and I, um, especially with those injuries that I just mentioned, and I definitely think the Ravens are going to score a bunch at home. Um, Jackson looked awesome last week at quarterback for them. I expect him to have another good week uh, against the Cardinals here at home. So half unit on the over 46, and just a slight lean to the Ravens. Then we've got Patriots favored 18 and a half. Looks like it might be up to 19 in some places in Miami. Miami, um, they're Players were talking about trying to get traded. It looks like they weren't trying that hard and don't have that much talent. Meanwhile, New England looked like they're just going to have another one of those years where they just roll everybody. So Brady looked good. The defense looked great like it did in the Super Bowl. Um, so with all that said, uh, it is September game in Miami. I would lean with Miami, but I'm not sure how they're going to come out and play, so I'd probably not put any... Uh, Anything on it, just lean with Miami. Uh, okay, moving down. Cowboys in Washington. Cowboys looked awesome last week, beating up on the Giants at home. Redskins looked like they were going to pull up upset early. They were up at halftime on the Eagles. Ended up losing. Um, they got a late touchdown and covered the spread there. Washington did in Philly. Let's see. Uh, so Cowboys 5.5. Normally, I'd love the home underdog division rivalry game. I'm going to go ahead and skip this game. I don't really have a lean either way. Probably lean skins if I was forced to, but um, no action on that game. Um, let's keep it moving. Total is 46 there. No feeling on that. Uh, moving down, we got Jags at Texans. We got uh, Minshew in at quarterback, replacing Nick Foles. He looked good last week. I believe it was 23 out of 25 attempts, almost 290 yards. Um, Texans had that heartbreaking loss. That was quite the exciting game they had there. And, uh, man, I actually called that one on my Monday night video. I said that I liked uh, Texans to cover but lose a close game in New Orleans. So had that game capped right. This week... Um, I like the nine points. I'm going to take a uh, half unit on the Jags plus nine. Um, I think it will be a close game. Um, doing opposite of what I did last week. I expect Texans to win a close game. So uh, no feeling on the total, which was 43 and a half. Moving down, we got Seattle Seahawks. Um, they were one point winner at home against the Bengals last week. Playing at Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers favored four at home over the Seahawks. Steelers looked inept, lost by 30 points in New England. Um, their offense got, what, six points or three points or something? Bad performance by them. Oh, yeah, the Tomlin got that, went for a field goal, fourth and one for some reason. So I guess they got six points. Uh, let's see. I don't like this game. I guess I would lean the Steelers if I had to maybe, but definitely not putting any action on it. Um, I tend to get screwed in games when Seattle are involved, so I'm leery of that one. The total is 47. I don't have a feeling on that, so no action there. Slightly into the Steelers. Continuing on, San Francisco 49ers are playing against the Bengals. 
Bengals favored one and a half. The total is 45 and a half. The Bengals looked good last week. Dalton looked really good in particular. Um, Joe Mixon had an ankle sprain, so he's actually listed as questionable. Um, you know, I don't have the... Uh, and then the 49ers, yeah, they won on the road. And this week, they're staying in Youngston, Ohio, getting ready for the game. They go back home, trying to stay focused for this second road game. Um, right now, if Mixon doesn't play, I'm going to lean 49ers. If he does play, I'd lean the Bengals. I think this will be a close game, both kind of evenly matched game. Um... 49ers, I expect them to play well, but I also expect the Bengals to play well, so no action right now. I want to see what happens with Mixon. All right, moving down the line, Minnesota Vikings are at Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers currently favored three, minus 105, 43 and a half is the total. Uh, looks like we've got 70% of the tickets currently on Vikings with just 63% of the cash on the Packers, but it's early, so those numbers, you know, might not mean that much right now. Uh, yeah, so the Packers beat the Bears at home week one, or in Chicago week one, sorry. Um, the defense looked like it... Uh, could be improved. They played really well, but um, Trubisky and the Bears' offense wasn't playing well. So how good is the Packers' defense, I guess, is the question. Here at home, Vikings' defense looked awesome. The offense, they ran the ball a lot. I think they had 39 carries, and Cousins just threw the ball 10 times. So, you know, last season I believe Vikings were first in my power rankings. And then... Um, As the season went on, obviously, they uh, Cousins didn't have a good year. So this year, I was skeptical again with Cousins. He played a little bit in preseason. He didn't look good there. Um, but, man, their defense looked great week one. And uh, they do have Dalvin Cook back, running back. So, you know, despite my skepticism, if Cousins performs decently, I think that they should be a little bit better than they were last year. I like the Vikings here. I'm going to take them plus three, minus 115 um, for half a unit, despite the money currently being a little bit lower than the tickets, which is looks like the public's on the Vikings. I'm still going half a unit on the Vikings plus three. So, moving on. We've got Chiefs favored seven, minus 105 in Oakland. Um, 88% of the tickets here on Kansas City, 70% of the cash. So Raiders looked great last week. They kind of dominated Denver. They had uh, Carr was on fire, and some of their other young guys played well. So here, um, and obviously the Chiefs just tore up the Jags. Hill will be out, um, but Sammy Watkins had a big week. I imagine the Raiders are going to try to double-team him and kind of zone in on him. Now that Hill's out. This week, um, I'd say I'd lean with the Raiders. Mm, can't take myself to taking money on it. To be honest, I lost a little bit on the Broncos. I had to lean on them last week, and that didn't work out for me. So, lean with the Raiders plus 7. 53 and a half is the total. Um, probably a lean towards the over as well. It looks like everyone's on the over. 98% of the money's currently shown over. So, just lean with the Raiders, lean with the over. But... Uh, no action there yet. Moving down the line, it looks like the Rams are currently down to two points favored at home against the Saints. We got that big rematch of last year's division championship game where the Saints got screwed on the no, on the no call on the pass interference at the end of the game. That would have hooked them up and put them in the Super Bowl. So big um, revenge game for the Saints here. They just had that big win on Monday night. And now they've got to travel to L.A. L.A. doesn't have a great home field advantage, as I think most people know. Um, Rams, I had them lower in my power rankings than some people. I've got them up to number four this week. Uh, they did look good on the road last week. I actually do like the Rams, despite the revenge factor here. Um, I like that they're favored less than that key number of three. Um, and I like how their defense played. So... For me, Gurley, he didn't get a lot of touches. He had a couple runs where he looked good, but it uh, looks like he's still getting limited touches. Um, Goff wasn't great last week, but uh, I really like the defense. And, um, you know, I actually have the Saints number one in my preseason power ranking. I got him down to number three behind the... Pay 
Patriots at one. Yeah, and the Patriots at one, and the uh, Chiefs obviously at two. So, anyways, I like the Rams here. I like the Rams minus the two. I'm going to go ahead and put a unit on them. I think that's the first one that I've actually I've either leaned or only take a half unit so far. So, Rams for one unit. Um, probably lean towards the over, but uh, no action on that yet. Moving down to the next game, Bears at Broncos. Bears favored 2.5 minus 115 in Denver, 40.5 is the total. I like the home underdog here. I like Denver Broncos. I like plus 2.5. Um, I liked it. It opened out a pick, and I actually liked it there. And then, uh, yeah, I like Denver at home. They don't look great week one, but I think they're going to be a little bit. They're going to play better this week. They're at home. In the altitude early in the season, and uh, hopefully Flacco has a decent performance with his first home game. And I'm not not big on the Bears. They took the season win total under before it started. Trubisky didn't look good last week. I don't see them being a road favorite, even if it's against Denver. So put a unit on Denver plus two and a half, minus oh five. I'd also like them in um, tease situations where you tease them up you know, seven points or so to get them to through the key numbers of three and seven. Typically don't do a lot of teasers, but, you know, let me go ahead and pick one teaser this week for a unit. I want to put um, the Bears again, getting seven points, so up to nine and a half, or sorry, Broncos, getting the Seven extra points, so we're up to nine and a half points. And then I'd also going to go ahead and throw in the Eagles. They're the next game. They're favored one and a half. You know what? Sorry, I was thinking that the... Scratch that. Scratch that last little part I said. As you can tell, I don't do any edits in these things. Um, yeah, let me actually just forget about the teaser for the moment. I think maybe this week, this one's running really long. If anyone's watched all the way through, thank you. Appreciate it. This week, instead of doing a second video about college, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a video maybe Saturday night and talk about the games. And maybe I'll give you a teaser then. I'm going to hold off now. So, uh, yeah, like the Broncos Plus two and a half, minus 105 for unit. Nothing on the total. And then moving down Sunday night football. Eagles are favored one and a half over Atlanta. Total is 52 and a half. I like the, uh, you know, I'm not sure who I like yet. I want to say I lean towards the Eagles. Um, we'll just leave it at a lean for now. And uh, not too sure. Monday night football is crazy. Browns favored two and a half at the Jets. I was really liking the Jets. Last year was when Thursday Night Football Browns Jets when uh, Baker Mayfield came in and had a great game and kind of had his coming out party and the Browns beat the Jets. This year I like the Jets to win that game, but Darnold has mono apparently, so he's not playing. Um, Trevor Simeon, the backup's playing. He used to be a backup for Peyton Manning. Uh, I think he played football at Northwestern. So... Who knows how he'll play. Um, six and a half is big. I'd lean towards the Jets plus six and a half, but no action yet. Let me quickly talk on these college games. A couple games I liked on Friday, actually. Let's see. Friday, Wake Forest favored three at home against North Carolina. I've lost on North Carolina week one and two going against them. So I'm an idiot. I'm going Wake Forest for half unit minus three, despite um, losing against North Carolina. Um, North Carolina's had two big wins. Now they're on Thursday night football. Oh, it's not even Thursday night. It's actually a noon game. That's odd. Yeah, I'm going to go Wake Forest minus three for half unit. Boston College plays at 430, favored 21 over Kansas. That's huge. Kansas is horrible. Give me a half unit on Boston College minus 21. Scrolling down just really quick through these. Uh, my NC State's playing out West Virginia minus six and a half. Give me a half unit on the Wolf Pack minus the six and a half. And then um, all favorites so far. I swear there was a dog or two I liked. 
Oh, Iowa State. I was favored one and a half at Iowa State. Give me a half unit on Iowa State. I'd lean towards the under, 43 and a half, but no pick there. Half unit on Cyclones plus one and a half, home underdog. And then, I think there's one last game. Oh, you know what? Go ahead and give me a half unit on Syracuse plus 28. It's probably silly, but I'm going to take that big number. Syracuse got blown out uh, against Maryland last week, but they played Clemson tough. Four almost upset them. Possibly did upset them. Man, I can't even remember these years anymore. This video is really long. Sorry about... Uh, Yeah, so they upset Clemson in 2007. No scratch that game. I'm just going to say a lean with Clemson plus 28. The last game that I wanted to pick was Middle Tennessee State plus 6.5. They're at home against Duke. Give me a half unit on them. And uh, I'm going to call it a video. If anyone really sat through this for 22 minutes, 21 minutes, you're awesome. Um, good luck on the games and thanks for watching. Drop me a comment, say what's up. Appreciate you guys.